my own sense is the auto industry is certainly one industry where we should be clearly 100% indigenized. Uh, some companies, of course, claim to be 90, 95, 99% indigenized, but I suspect it's not truly so because maybe one or two layers down, there is an import element. We have started engaging with the industry and having long conversations. The Korean industry, auto industry, Hyundai and Kia, are clearly two of the laggards. They've enjoyed uh, the benefits of our free trade agreement with Korea and Japan and continued to import indiscriminately. So they've cost us dear, and I don't mind saying it publicly also. That small investment, maybe they bought half a billion or a billion dollars, has cost India very dear in terms of the billions of dollars of trade deficit they have caused us directly with Korea and with other countries. The way forward to my mind is, we've been talking to Korea also to open up their markets for our products. But look at the stark difference. Korea, for example, doesn't stop any export of steel from India to Korea. So does Japan. There's no government which is stopping our export from India to Korea or Japan. But you know what? We can't sell a ton of steel in both these countries. Because there's a nationalist spirit. We unfortunately don't have any, that in India. If we can save 10 cents, we are happy to import from anybody. We are happy to strengthen China and import from China if we can make 2% more profit in our business. It's a very unfortunate and sad reality or mirror that I'm showing to our industry and our consumers. And it's high time that situation changed. Korea or Japan will buy steel from their domestic company at $100 a ton more, but will not allow an Indian company to become their supplier. No government stops it. And when we talk to the government, they say, but we have not, there's no barrier from our side. But there's that nationalist spirit that businesses there demonstrate to support their own industry. And look at us. I remember a case where I was imposing anti-dumping duty on a particular product. The DGTR finding showed that uh, it deserved to be, uh, there was a surge in import, we should stop it. And when I saw the product, I said, it's such a simple product, there must be domestic manufacturing. Why are they importing it? And when I found out from the importer, from the person who was manufacturing in India, who were the main consumers? I found some who were known to me. So I remember it was 11 in the night. I woke up the MD of the company, which could have been a potential consumer, but was currently importing. And I said, why don't you buy it from the Indian manufacturer? On his finished product, the impact was uh, two and a half point two five percent sorry. On a product of 40 rupees, 35, 40 rupees or so, that's basic impact. 10 pesa. But he said, no, my systems will not allow it. I'm getting it cheaper from abroad and I will have to continue to import. So I had to take the action of imposing an anti-dumping duty. Anup was there. He may even remember that particular case. Two Indian companies, of course, the other one was a buyer, was a multinational. But I don't think it is very much different for our Indian own companies also. It's very unfortunate. But I think it's time that this awakening comes and this little bit of the national spirit which Prime Minister Modi has very often tried to articulate and speak about. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.